What's up, guys? I'm back. Um, wait, see. I'm trying to get you at a good angle so that you're not staring at the ceiling. Um, but I'm back today. We're going to do a couple more saddles. Um, to continue my tack cleaning and so it seems like you guys really liked the last um tack cleaning video it is a little bit um windy out right now so i'm sorry if you can kind of hear the wind god how big do my muscles look in this lighting right now i'm digging it but um yeah you guys seem to really enjoy the last video i did of this so we're gonna do another one today um and keep cleaning these saddles. So I have this one. I don't really know how to clean this. Oh my God, this is nasty. Look at this guys. This is gross. I'm not entirely sure how to clean this because it's synthetic. That is really gross. I kind of want to brush it off outside with a brush. So I'm going to do that quick. Let's see. I'll turn you guys. I really um, am trying not to have to do any editing for these videos because the last one was really long. Oh, God. need to do some research on clean synthetic tack because I honestly really don't know other than just like washing it with water um I don't really know if I have anything to clean this the way it should be cleaned I'm gonna spray it with this this I don't know if this is a good idea or not but at least you get the dirt off Um, I don't know, have I talked to you guys since Grace's video? I don't think that I have. Um, but you guys have been super awesome and super kind about Grace and her passing. Um, I'm really, I'm doing fine. Some of you guys have asked, you know, how I'm doing and I'm really, I'm fine. Um, you know, I was emotional in the video, but like, how can you not get emotional when like this animal is dying in front of you and you're basically helpless? Um, and it sucks that like she died. Um, but I think it is really important to highlight like the parts of owning horses and stuff that is just not fun and is super stressful and obviously emotional um, because there's not a lot of people on YouTube, I think, that show that. I think, especially on YouTube, like, everybody wants to think or everybody wants to show, like, the really glamorous parts of owning horses and, like, having a barn and all that stuff. But, like, sometimes it's just not. Like, sometimes it sucks. And it's a lot of work and it's stressful and your horses aren't cooperating. You have health scares like that. So it, it can be really hard, but um, I am glad that she got to enjoy her life here for the last year. And um, she's buried here. Um, I did take a, a small video clip of where we buried her. So I might add that like in the next vlog, but, um, but yeah, it's kind of quiet now that she's not here because like every morning basically any time that I was outside walking around she was whinnying at me because she knew like every morning I was coming out to get her breakfast every night I was coming out to give her dinner and so she just whinnied at me all day long there was one day I was I had a truckload of hay of small squares and I was like throwing off the hay bales and then I'd pick one up and take it over to the pallet and stack them 
Every time I picked one up, she'd whinny at me. I'd go set it down, I'd pick up the next one, she'd whinny at me. Same thing, for like 20 bales, because it's like she knew every morning I'd come out, I'd get a hay bale, I'd get their buckets, and then they got fed. So I think she was hoping every time I picked up another bale that she was gonna get fed again. <laughs> um, but honestly, I think it was probably for the best um, because I don't know how she would have done the rest of the summer with the heat and her heaves and like her not shedding her hair and just, I don't know how she would have done, honestly. I don't know how else to clean this, so I'm basically gonna call it good. It's not dirty anymore. Um, but yeah, I don't really know if she would have been miserable or, or not. But I'm gonna oil these reins. I have these split reins, these leather split reins that my dad bought me forever ago. And I seriously, I don't think I've ever put them on a bridle and used them. They're in perfect condition, they're still brand new. I just don't ride with split reins. I really never have. The only time I have is for like trail riding. And like at the ranch that I used to work at growing up, that's all the horses had was split reins and just tied them in a knot at the end. But like, now that I have my own horses and stuff, I like find no use for split reins. So let me know down below if you guys use split reins or single reins, if that's what they're called, I don't know. Um, somebody asked on, I'm trying to think, on one of my community tab posts, because I, I put on my community tab like topic ideas for these type of videos or questions that you guys have that I can answer. And somebody did ask how the horses were coming along, um, how the property is coming along, etc. And I'll be honest, like, oh my God, this cat. Go away, Tic Tac. The horses really haven't been coming along much other than what you've seen in the training videos. Um, and same with the property really because right now, I don't know why it was really dry this spring and now it's just a freaking mud hole everywhere. Like we have gotten severe storms and just days of rain for like two weeks. Oh my God, this cat, I swear. Get out. All he does. Ugh. Anyways, so yeah, everything is just a muddy, gross disaster right now. So are the pens. So I really haven't done anything with Dolly in like two weeks because the round pin is a sloppy mess. And Oakley, I haven't worked with her in about a week because it's just been muddy in her pen and stuff, but I should probably today, I'd like to today if like the wind and stuff goes down, but um, go in there. She has had a halter on. Well, obviously she has, she's been wearing a halter since I got her, but I actually got her to put on another halter and take it off. So she has really been coming along good while I'm working with her. Um, and even yesterday she got like her halter over her ear and she's done that once. And I had to like go in scratch her, rub her, touch her face like 20 times before she would let me fix her halter on her ear. Yesterday, I think I scratched her two or three times and then just reached up and put it back over her ear and she was fine. Like she didn't freak out, she didn't pull back. So she has definitely, she's, she's done really, really good. It's more on me for not being consistent with her um, that she she's not progressed more, but for what she has done, she's done so good. She's so much more comfortable with me being around. Like, um, I did put her on grain, so hopefully that will help her gain some weight because she does definitely need to gain some weight, um, which I'm surprised about, especially at her age. She's only seven, and a lot of times they're really easy keepers. But she does need to gain some weight, so she's on grain. But I'll go in there to, like, get her grain pan or... Um, 
or her bucket or whatever and she doesn't even back away she just follows me around in there like she's totally comfortable with me being in there so that is really really nice um, so yeah I got her to put a halter on and take it off over her existing halter um, but I don't want to take her, her current halter completely off yet, just in case she were to like get out again. I don't want to take the risk of like her getting out and then nobody can catch her but me, like if I'm not home or just if I can't catch her when she, if she gets loose. So it's really just on there at the moment for safety reasons until she gets really solid and letting me throw a halter on and off and on and off. So, so for right now, she's still wearing it. Um, but yeah, she's doing good. Otherwise, um, Dixie really oh, shoot. haven't done anything with her other than just feed her. And I think she has gained a little bit of weight. I put her on grain as well. She was getting like just alfalfa pellets and beet pulp. But since Grace is gone, I've been feeding out Grace's senior feed to her. And... Um, yeah, she, she looks forward to feeding time at every single minute of the day, just like Grace did. Um, she's actually really become pretty annoying. I put BB over there with her, and so I can use those stalls to give them both grain and not have them, like, fight over it. But, oh, my God, every time I go out there now, she just, <laughs> and Winnie's at me the whole time I'm around, so kind of gotten a little bit ridiculous she stands at the stall doors and like will bang on them with her leg um and it's just kind of being obnoxious obnoxious about it so I have been correcting that frick I hate that I've been trying to correct that a little bit because I I don't like when my horses are obnoxious and overkill with stuff like that so otherwise She's, I mean, she's fine. Like she's, she's chilling like a villain and she has no issues with me catching her anymore. Um, she was like really standoffish when she came here and didn't really want anything to do with me. Now she follows me around all over the place. Um, down here at the end of their lot, like where the, the fence lines the road, just the other day, they started pushing on the panels so hard that they could reach over to get the tall grass. And so I had to fix that and run more hot wire all the way down so that they'd stop pushing on the fence. But her and BB seem to get along pretty well. Um, I don't think I've even heard them like squeal or kick at each other at all. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Dolly um, is by herself, so she's in her own pen. She's in Grace's old single pen. Um, and honestly, I think I like her there. Like, obviously, I'd love for her to be with the other horses and be in a herd, of course. But being she's a project and I probably won't keep her forever, like, it's nice just having her in that pen. And then Luna's not teaching her bad catching habits. She also likes Oakley. Like, her and Oakley stand together at the fence all day. They will just stand there together. And that is so cute because Grace pretty much wanted nothing to do with Oakley, didn't care at all. She just wanted to stand with the other horses on the other side of the pen. So the fact that Oakley has kind of made a friend with Dolly but isn't getting beat up by Dolly is pretty nice. So, yeah, I am pretty excited for Oakley like once um, she's very tame and in a routine and we can start groundwork and stuff like that because she, I think, really is going to be a sweet horse. Um, and she's young, so she's a great age. She is pretty small. She's um, probably only 14 hands, so like pretty close to how big Sugar is. But being I'm a small person, I don't think it'll be a big deal for me. And then if I ever do decide to sell her, like I'll just obviously advertise her for a small adult, but, but yeah, other than that, I'm pretty excited for her. Um, the property, nothing really has happened with the property um, since we buried, or 
got rid of buried the shingles. Um, I am starting to set up some of my obstacles down there. So like my tractor tires are down there. I just drug the two bridges down there um, yesterday. So hopefully we can get the bridges set up. I also want to build, figure out how to build a gate like for like that they have in trail class a trail gate and stuff like that and just have a whole thing down there to work with um, in a couple days actually I'm going to be taking sugar to a horsemanship clinic um, for one of my lesson kids because our local saddle club likes to do clinics and like put on small clinics for members and so they were offering a horsemanship beginners clinic. And I think that would be really great for um, my lesson girl. So I asked her parents and her parents were all about it. So in a couple of days, I'll, I don't know if I'll vlog that or not. I will probably get some clips, but what the heck is going on here? Oh, I have reins attached to this. Um, but yeah, so I think my lesson girl will get a lot out of that. So I'm going to be taking sugar there and she's going to ride her in the clinic. Um, yeah, that's about it. I've had a few lessons. Um, lessons have been kind of difficult because like being I'm in a new area, I just moved here a year ago so I don't really know anybody in this area and like my name is not out there in this area so getting clients I've been advertising a bunch but like there's not a whole lot of feedback so um, yeah it's been kind of hard to get clients but I'm just gonna keep advertising and um, putting my name out there and hopefully we'll see some clients come in but who knows oh my god seriously I don't like dripping this oil all over the place because then it makes a stain on the floor Ugh. I have been working on my feed room um, and putting a wafer board on the walls like I did back here like this particle board putting that on the walls in there so I can get some shelves and it's not such a disaster in there. I do want to do a deep cleaning video of the feed room as well um, sometime. But yeah, it's just basically a giant mess in there right now. Uh, we do have a endurance. I shouldn't say endurance. We have a distance riding event later this month. So I'll hopefully be going to that should be. I don't see why not. Um, although gas is just so insane right now. Like, I don't know how many of you guys have impacted your horse activities for the year because of the gas prices, but um, well, I don't know why this won't come out. This weekend, there is another saddle club trail ride, but it is, it's like over an hour and a half away. It's like an hour and 45 minutes away at a park. And I've never been to this park. I've always wanted to go, but I just don't want to, I don't want to drive there. I mean, yeah, I just don't want to, I don't want to spend the gas money. Like that's an hour and 45 minutes. That's a kind of a long way to go in my opinion for just a day trip. And it is a campground. Like I could camp overnight if I wanted to, but then you have to pay for, you know, the campsite and whatever. And so like, oh man, just gas is insane right now. So I'm actually interviewing today, this afternoon for another job because I work at a horse barn right now, um, like a half an hour from here, but they just honestly like don't have enough work for me to do, which sounds like hard to believe because it's a really big boarding facility, but they just really don't. Like when I started there, after I quit my retail job, they told me 20 hours a week would be great for them because they don't want to pay anybody to, for more than 20 hours a week. And I was like, that's great because I don't want to work more than 20 hours a week. Um, you know, trying to get this property cleaned up and stuff. 
But honestly, it's been like nine to 12 hours a week. And like that is not cutting it at all, especially right now with gas. Like, and it's a half an hour away. Like I think it cost me 10 bucks to go there and back every day. So, so yeah, I'm interviewing for a job this afternoon. So we'll see how that goes. It's more, it's gonna be more like 30 hours a week. So I'm not really excited about that, but. Um, but it has to be done. I have bills to pay, right? Any of you young, young girls watching that still like maybe live with your parents or probably live with your parents? Um, yeah. Take advantage of that. I mean, don't take advantage of your parents, but like take advantage, <laughs> appreciate the fact that like, ugh, you don't have a thousand bills to pay. But I honestly learned that from an early age, having the horses because my dad wouldn't pay for it. So, so yeah, this is my show halter that never gets used because I don't have all of your horse. Um, and the rope, the rope, the line. bridle. don't really know what I want to do with it yet either. I thought it was kind of ironic how in the last video I was asking you guys like what I should do with Sacker's halter because the only horse that it will fit would be Grace. Well, not going to use it for Grace anymore. So I don't really know in this halter or bridle I guess. I don't really like this hackamore. I don't like this shank style hackamore very well. It worked for him. Like he didn't love it either, but it, it did okay for him. But I don't know if I should just sell it. I mean like the hackamores that I do use regularly do have a little bit of leverage, but this one is just, I feel like too, a little too much. And if I have to use that much leverage on my horse, then I probably need to work with my horse. So, I don't know. I don't know what I should do with it. What do you guys think? Sell it? Because I like this head stall a lot. Um, it, this head stall could probably be a good one for Dolly. good oil it's just been hanging for months and yeah I am also like keeping in the back of my head um, ideas for a 10,000 subscriber giveaway there's like 9,800 or something of you guys right now. And that is amazing. Um, in my opinion, it's amazing because even just like the thought of that many people knowing who I am is kind of outrageous to me, insane. Um, this might be, that might be everything in here right now. But, Obviously, I did a 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I did a 5,000 subscriber giveaway. I would love to. Sorry. I'd love to do a 10. Oh We're just going to hold you right here. A 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, but I need ideas. Like, what do you guys think would be a good, something good to give away? I think. So I've done in the past where I've done like multiple winners and done like a bunch of small prizes or small boxes. That costs a bunch in shipping. But I also like giving 
a better opportunity to that many people um, rather than just one winner. And one winner is fine, but like, I, I like giveaways where there's multiple winners. Um, so, I don't know, I thought about doing a bunch of small like prize boxes or do, should I do just one large like party pack box? So, I don't know, let me know what you guys think on that and like ideas for what you would put in a box like that. Definitely some of my Try More Horses merch. Um, and then I also worked with a couple of brands like Cavallari, I work with them um, on their products and I've also worked with, a couple years ago I worked with Enjoy Yum's horse treats and they sent me a whole bunch of free treats and so I'd, I'd totally love to ask them if they would like to contribute as well. But like, yeah, what, what are some good like giveaway type stuff? Um, I'm gonna go get another saddle to clean because I have two in my trailer so I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. more stuff than just a saddle. So okay. Okay, I got that and some bridles. I've got my bridle that has a bit on it. And then Sugar's bridle was also in there. So, um, this is the only bridle and on, or only bit that I own. O-ring snaffle. Um, now that I am kind of getting more into having my own business and like training other people's horses, I wouldn't mind purchasing a couple other bits because um, a lot of People ride their horses with bits, obviously, like most people. And um, people that want to bring me a horse, they want their, they want me to ride their horse the way that they're probably going to ride them, or an at least consistent tack that they would ride them in at home. Um, and that's the only bit I have, and that's not going to work for a lot of people. So I don't know just kind of thought about it. I don't have my heart set on it, but it's a thought. This saddle right here is probably one of my favorites that I have. It is kind of heavy. That's probably the only thing I don't like about it is that it's kind of heavy, but I think I'm also like kind of conditioned because 90% of the time I use my black synthetic one and it literally weighs like 10 pounds. It weighs absolutely nothing. And so I get used to that being my normal saddle weight and then I have a leather saddle. It's like, oh, okay, well this is 45 pounds. Um, but I do like it. It's got a little bit of bling on it. Um, fits my butt good. It's got a little bit narrower bars too. I think they're maybe semi-quarter horse bars. They're not as wide as um, some of my other ones. Like my training saddle, this one is too wide um, for a lot of my horses. Like Luna, not even, not even gonna try it. Um, I have had that saddle on Luna before, but it is way too wide for her. It's a little bit too wide for Sugar. 
Um, it hits sugars, withers, if I don't have like a sham under it. Um, and I think it would do the same to BB because sugar and BB are built very similar through their back. But, but yeah. Ooh. That's nasty. I have debated, I actually kind of forgot about this saddle. So I have been debating whether I want to show in our county fair this year. Um, generally, I don't. I have like once or twice shown at the county fair. But I, I'm kind of just debating if I am going to or not this year because honestly, it is, it's like, I don't know almost feel bad for being there but at the same time I don't because like I'm a horse owner too I want to show my horses too you know I can show up and do it why not but at the same time like the county fairs around here at least are where people go to win the big bucks because it's added money so all the big wigs kind of show up to them and so like I'm pretty much no competition um, I'm not going to win anything. And I kind of just don't know, like, do I want to take up an entry spot when I know that, like, these people have thousands of dollar horses and thousands of dollar saddles. And I don't have anything blingy. This is the blingiest thing I own right here. And my show halter, that's it. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, you know, I want to go, though. Like, even though I'm not gonna win, like I wanna go show at the county fair too and just have fun and enjoy it. And like, that's what owning horses is about, right? It's not about the money and stuff, for me anyway. Um, but I don't know, I haven't decided. It's kind of like, do I spend the money in gas driving there to like not win anything? I'm not gonna win the money back. Um, and there's gonna be a thousand people there because the county fair is always a big show. So I'm gonna have to wait for hours. It's gonna be a slow moving show. Um, but I've also thought about just taking BB and doing the speed events at the end of the show. Like, cause a lot of people will go just to do the pleasure events. There's a lot of people that are just pleasure people. That's all they ride um, and ranch, but there's also a lot of people that show up in the afternoon just to run the speed classes. So I don't know, I haven't decided, but it would be fun. I love the, the county fair shows. Um, there's just so many people, it's so big. I did ride, um, I don't know if you guys remember Buttons. I rode Buttons at the county fair one year. Um, and we placed first in our division but that's the other thing is like I have shown at the county fair before but that was back when I was like 16 17 and was going with um, my barn owner and I like rode buttons in one of them but now I am in the adult classes like the 19 and over classes and that is such a bigger window of competition. Like, um, yeah, it's just a way bigger window of competition. So, so that's why I don't know. But I'll think about it for sure. I need a new rag. This one is so oily and gross. <laughs> but we're getting things clean. Today, hopefully, um, this afternoon, I'm going to go down and try to get my bridges moved into place. Maybe I'll vlog this afternoon. I don't know. I'm not, not really doing anything with the horses unless I work with Oakley, but she gets she doesn't get put in the vlogs, really. Because um, I have somebody that wants to come tomorrow. She's been messaging me back and forth 
about you know training services and stuff and she wants to come out and just look at my place basically so that's like nerve-wracking as it is because obviously everything's still kind of everywhere but she wants to come look at the place um, so I like kind of want to get my trail obstacles like out of just the middle of my yard and like set up at least It'd be really great to mow my lawn too I mean, I don't know, it's been like weeks since we mowed the lawn. And now I've been tying out the horses in the yards because they will obviously do mowing for us. But I mean, gas is expensive and I just haven't wanted to put gas in the mower. And it has rained like every other day it rains. So it's too wet to mow. Everything is muddy. Like the mower is just going to get stuck at every incline. So it's like, ugh. Everything looks like crap right now, and I can't fix it. No joke, you guys. The other day, I got the weed whacker out, and I weed whacked our entire lawn. The entire front yard next to our house, I weed whacked it. The whole thing. Like, it took hours. It took hours. But it's short. I also sprayed the weeds because... The weeds are just insane out here. Just ridiculous. Um, so this is Sugar's Bridal. And I don't know, let me know down below if any of you guys have used these flower hackamores before. Um, this head stall is too big for Sugar's face. Like it sits way low on her nose. So I might, I might switch it out. But I liked this one because it's a black hackamore with a black head stall, but it's too big for her face. Um, and I don't necessarily need to use this bridle on sugar, but I use it for my lesson kids because she's kind of hard in the face and you kind of have to pull her around a little bit more. Um, she's just not as soft. And so this has just the tiniest amount of leverage. So it can give them a little more control while they're still gaining confidence because she's like, um, rather than just ignoring them and pulling through them. So that's why I've been using this one. I mean, I don't generally ride her in it. I usually ride her in a side pole, and I don't know where that is right now. But I have noticed when I do ride her in this that these, the flower part, um, they like go to the side like this. Um, when it's on her and so I don't know how to fix that but like it's sitting on her and I'll pull and do you see how they just crank to the side instead of pulling back like this they just eh, they just go like this and yeah it's really annoying and maybe it's just not tight enough on her face I mean I could go two more holes tighter on the nose band but then there's like this flappy thing sticking out all over so that's annoying too and I don't really want to cut it off because what if I use this hackamore on someone else? So, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it works for like the lesson kids. Where am I gonna hang all this stuff? I don't have enough nails in here. You know what I should do while I'm in here is hang one of these. I've had these. I bought these, I think, at a tax swap like years ago, and I've just had them hanging in the barn. But I should put one right here while I'm out here. I don't know if I have any nails. But, um, because my borders obviously aren't coming back for this, so I just claim it as my own now. But, I think that is all I have in here. Oh, I was going to clean this off too. How do you guys like to clean your girths? Because I haven't developed a good strategy for cleaning girths yet either. Really.
probably about as good as it's gonna get for this dirt. But, um, all right, I think that's about all that I got today. I don't really have much else in here. Although, sometime we're going to, probably in the next one of these videos, we're just going to soak a bunch of stuff because I've got like rope halters and nylon halters and like reins that just are like dirty and grimy from like the horse's face and stuff that just need to like soak and then we'll give them like a good power wash down so let me know what you think about all of that down below and let me know what else you guys want to see down below um if you guys like the vlogs if you want to see more training videos another deep cleaning video let me know down below and i'll see you guys in the next video bye